It's been a while since we've done a Gwen Jungle video. Standard rune set on your page, absolutely boring, you need to make a video about that. But I put her in the Hidden OP Junglers video on the main channel not too long ago. Everyone was very excited, except those of us who have to face it, because you know she's gonna get 10 CS per minute, you know that she's gonna run you over, and you're on the clock to beat her and keep her down. Thing is, an Evelyn is also kind of in that category, except Gwen is one of those champions that just is objectively overly stacked. She has every stat in the game in her kit, and if you allow her to AFK farm and get 10 CS per minute and rotate on these fights, give her free counter ganks, you're not gonna have a lot of fun. So, we are obviously gonna have the Nash's Tooth Rift Maker build tag. As Shapeshifters mentioned, she likes the Lich Bane as well. I kinda like Lich Bane plus Nash's combination on a few champions, but you know, we like to keep things a little bit more simple when we're doing these kind of off-meta champions. Keep it accessible until you learn otherwise. For Nissa Crux, we're going to go ahead and obviously we've lost this plant. That's the downside of those weird level 1s, where you could obviously hit this, carry on to the blue side of the map. Udyr is Omega fighting the Jax here. I do like looking at this as a potential ganking angle. Now, obviously, this is not a Challenger GM game. I prefer the Master T game sometimes for these because it shows you, hey, even with an off-meta champion, you can still do good work and get to Hyla. Above Master Tier, you need to amp up your jungling. So here is an opportunity to maybe gank this. Now, for Gwen, this is where things become difficult. Diana, Hecarims, they all think, look, this is low probability. I shouldn't show up. I don't want to go in here. I don't have CC. I don't have slows. You have good dash ability. Yes, I got my W. Gwen is immune. But I really want to put multiple points into Q here and use my passive, use a snippy snippy to full clear as fast as possible. Then ideally, because we have a Camille Yasuo bottom lane, Versus a Aphilius Samira bottom lane. Now that is just... That's weird. But the point is it's double range versus double melee, which means early on they should have the prior to push. So Gwen can full clear down and say, look, I would love to help you on top lane, as obviously the Evelyn has done exactly what I said, right? She cuts her clear short, sees the gank, and goes for it. For her, it makes a lot more sense because she can shove, force TP, and then fall back down to the blue side. Whereas in Gwen's situation, you absolutely must head to Fukai.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. Though so to climb faster than everybody you know and to jungle diff every game you play, head to Fukai gg or click the link in the description below her blue side now would be naked and she misses the opportunity to maybe do something here the question in this game is how do we do the most damage in the whole game on our on our team especially how do we hit turrets how do we have decent kill participation while maintaining 10 tiers per minute so the bottom line here sag off a little bit so you're thinking okay probably warded you know my yasu is clearing the wave not a good ganking time so i'll move into the river see if i can do something mid lane if not you can Fall back and wait a little bit for your scuttle crab. It's okay in the situation to wait a bit for your scuttle crab. Not too much, but you know, you know that Evelyn's down here and thus has lost her full clear tempo. And now we see bottom lane full trading, full fighting, full fisting. You want to rotate for this? Good. Alternatively, if that lane is reset, if that lane is stagnant and still, then the the Evelyn, you know she's going to be topside here. She could easily look to now gank the Pantheon. Let's see what transpires, because, you know, Yasuo is already dead. Gwen should ask herself, is there an 80% chance here that I can actually nab some kills? With the Ghost, we're going to see if we can dash in here and start activating the snippy snippy mechanics. Obviously, remember that E is an attack speed steroid as well. You have no ult to shoot him down, which of course you would otherwise. Pantheon's rotating here. He's going to try and hit that. Doesn't matter. Snip does the job. And now we can auto attack and keep doing that. Playing passives. And we die. That's fine, though. I'm okay with this death on Gwen, because the Evelyn gets nothing. Pantheon has a heads-up play, saying, hey, listen, why don't I just roam, because Evelyn could gank me easily. And then Gwen just approaches. Here's the thing. When you have this beautiful ability, right? Attack speed, on hit, extra range, that's pretty important. And the first one to hit an enemy refunds 25% of this ability's cooldown. You're looking at something that you think, okay, no CC, but it has stick ability. And when you can stick to champions in these ganks, you don't, especially with Ghost, you don't need to worry too much about not having that CC. Now, what the Gwen does is go to Raptors, into the Krugs, most likely to loop here potentially, or to loop back down for this one. If your idea is to do the Krugs, Raptors into this, 
that's also a better play because if you can't take this, you can carry on, right? Like, you just carry on sequencing uh, nice and smooth, especially as you know the Evan will reset and go to the bottom side. 99% do our respawn Krugs, do our respawn Raptors, and in this particular case, doing Raptors into Krugs is inefficient. You're going to walk over ground you've already walked when you could just do this. And there's no threat for the Evelyn taking your, your Raptors at that particular timestamp. Obviously here, this is what we're talking about. You guys can see that right, the max HP, the healing. This allows you to stay with ganks and stay with fights way more than most champions can do. And obviously this is the one where you want to snip as much as possible and add that true damage component to the damage that you have. Now, in the meantime, Evelyn is of course on the bottom side and the Jax is being pushed in by the Udyr who says, let me help you on these grubs. We say thank you so much. But I still think we could have gone Krugs, Raptors into this, a bit more efficient. And now if Evelyn were to show down here for this particular gang, you know that the respawn timers on these camps usually will be like five minutes and like 5.37, 5.40. So you could easily counter jungle them at this particular timestamp. However, because she ganked top lane and then fell back down to the, the Scuttle Crab and fell back down to the blue side, you don't know the timers. Like you just aren't entirely sure when she did these camps. And so going on a random expedition here is not really, again, an efficient use of time. So what we can do is use the fact that this is pushed up a little bit and shadow through the fog of war. Nicely done. That's right. There we go. And go ahead and take our quadrant here. In the meantime, obviously, our bottom line is having a gaming moment. Evelyn is very, very slow here. Does actually cut in. Does actually cut in. But now Gwen can just hold the mid lane, as you see. So you could easily carry on. But if you're your Sua, your Katarina, your mid laner, your Pantheon, whatever, Yone, whatever you have mid lane has roamed here to gank. They are now the jungler and you become the mid laner. Now, obviously, as a Gwen, your eyes light up because, ooh, free CS, deny the terror plates. And I don't think that the Evan will be able to steal many camps, even if she gets one. Okay, whatever, my team are coming from base. And obviously, for Ev from Evelyn's perspective, this gank that you see here, she goes right quadrant, ganks top lane, falls back down to this and this, right? Now, you're thinking, that's good. Now she does a blue stick quadrant. That's okay. But the punishment for showing up here is right in this moment. She does the respawn of her Krugs, respawn of her Raptors, and now has no camps to do on the top side. She is literally running around with dead time, and she can't counter jungle because the Gwen understood this dead time. Pathing was a little weird, but still, right idea. Quadrant, grubs, defend. And that's how you do this. That's how you get grubs and defend your side. You look for that gap that stall moment that the enemy jungler causes for a bad decision or a compromising decision, and now you abuse it. Evelyn, of course, will try and take that RNG scuttle on the bottom side. We could go ahead and contest this, obviously. I do think that's probably, if you're feeling a bit spicy, somewhere where you could go because you know it's going to spawn up, you know your suicide out of base, and you know you can start trading, but remember, if it's a low probability play, you got the rise with Pryo, they're coming out of base, white coin fill bit, just do your quadrant, protect it, let her have the scuttle crab, and then look for your next potential play. They're gonna, most likely going to go on Dragon. If you have numbers and gold and itemization advantages, then feel free to go ahead and contest this Dragon. Out of Fog of War here as well. You know it's all warded up. You know Rise is down there. You know this. So we sit outside the Fog of War. Wait for the Camille's E, and then maybe we can Ghost R here, which is what we're really looking to do if we need to. We missed the first R1. That's the one that gives you the slows, but it doesn't really matter. That <laughs> other one was also a little bit wonky, but that's absolutely fine. You just run in there, use your attack speed steroid, use your Gwen as immune. I mean, watch this. Okay, here we go. So, we're waiting outside of Fog of War. Again, exquisite pathing here. Very nice. Twice we've seen that now. All you gotta do is, when you press this ghost button up in one, there it is. Here we go. We can E in. We get the attack speed steroid. You can use your R1 to get that slow to make sure you guarantee that uh, hit onto them. We do miss the first one, which is fine. And now you want to make sure you're stacking up that Q and hitting that sweet spot for true damage. So, don't clump up against the Gwen. We get the bonus resistances in the W. Resistances in the W. You can move that one time. Gwen is immune. Gwen is immune. And you're just firing off ults here in a clump. And obviously just auto-attacking and queuing whenever you can. And you can see here, uh, extra damage, sweet spot is true damage. And over here, you're looking at increased damage per proc, but the slow is really where the utility comes in. So do not tell me that you struggle to gank on Gwen Jungle. Because I understand why that's difficult for people. Like, how do I gank on champion with no CC, no slows? And all they have is the ability to run at you. Well, she runs at you better than almost anybody in the game. And when she gets really, really fat, it's not so good. Uh, it's, it's very scary. I still think she's dangerously designed, to be honest with you. I, I, I like seeing her in jungle. I think it's nice to see these kinds of things in jungle. But I do think as a designed concept, flawed, broken, it, it just physically cannot work. Like, she can never be really strong. 
who should be way too oppressive and obnoxious. He has to have that lower ended win rate just because of, like, what are we talking about here? Max HP damage, uh, true uh, healing. We got true damage, okay, plus the stacks. So we have bonus resistances and something that basically, like, you have to fight her inside. Well, I'm Zyra. I don't want to fight inside. I want to fight her outside, but I don't have a choice because this here gives you an attack speed steroid on hit range and it gets refunded. And of course, this gives multi proc slowing, increasing ability needle thing. <laughs> like, it just has absolutely everything in the game. And then our itemization synergizes super duper well. Regardless, you can keep her down. And we're not really talking about the Evelyn. And I think here's the second gank for the Evelyn. Hits the top lane on the Udyr. 002. That's my problem. The Gwen understood that if I cut up to help the Jax, help the Udyr and kill the Jax early, I'm going to lose this quadrant. I'm going to lose the ability to kill the Evelyn in terms of tempo in the second and third phase. And good Gwens understand that sometimes you compromise the first phase a little bit so that uh, second phase, second clears, third clears, and objectives line up perfectly where the enemy kind of compromises themselves and just can't punish you. Here again, we're looking for bottom line. That's fine. Uh, this is obviously uh, just a bit of an invest to see if we, maybe we can do something. Uh, use the Camille's ultimate, but they back off nicely. So you respect it. You fall back to your quadrant. There's no, obje there's no objective on the map. No one's threatening your camps. You're not interested in counter jungling the Evelyn or anything like that. So relax. Go back to your quadrant. Hit it up. Clean it. And now you see the Evelyn show here. And now, of course, you're level 7. Uh, 84 CS to 56. And now all of a sudden you go straight in here again using your E, using your artist to slow the rise. Everyone's going to force it over the wall here. Uh, another E is up on the docket right here, but we don't actually need it. We use it because we can. It's, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult, but it's a lot, right? It's understanding that synergy and that flow with the champion. But again, 511, 88 CS to 56, 5,300 gold. Remember, it's at 40 minutes, you want 6,000 gold on any champion to carry. For Gwen, if you can have more than that, it's like, if you throw games after that, really, that, that's 100% on you. Even if your team int, you should still be able to carry a split push and dominate in team fights. No one will be able to kill you with the heal. And, and, and the Rift Maker, obviously, if you go that build. So, with this, we fall back to our grubs. Udyr is, of course, existing. Two plates taken, one plate taken. Two plates taken from our team. We've got a lot here from the Yasuo, because we have the six grubs. Uh, this has nothing, obviously, and this has nothing, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. You are the Wincon. And now, you know Evelyn at this point is really compromised, so we can afford to go into a jungle. Let the Udyr proxy and shadow it. We see her down here, obviously, but uh, in-game you're not sure if she's coming up or down, especially Evelyn. Counter jungle, wait, observe, stare at the map. When you see her, figure out where she's been, figure out where she's going to go next, and keep the pressure on her. Now, the dragon's the big play. So as we hit to 11 minutes... We have the Pantheon roaming. You could objectively say, right, Rukai, shouldn't we go topside here? Should I not have fallen back to this quadrant and take it before I went back to base here? No. Because we saw the Evelyn shadowing in the scenario, we don't know if she's going to do a cringe repeat gank. We have the dragon spawning again. There's nothing else on the side of the map whatsoever. And we have Nash's tooth completed with Magi's and an Amptub. So I like the item spike. I like getting down here to prepare in case something happens. But obviously, as we see the all in here from the Pantheon, we can shadow the Evelyn's potential gank. Obviously, we see she's gone to the top side. But as you and I all know that Evelyn could easily just cheese in a bush somewhere, and it's better to kind of say, look, the objective side of her camp's up, I can be there. The R1 hits there. That uh, doesn't hit, sorry. The R2 does hit. I'm not sure if that was a little overzealous. Uh, do we have another one that we can use? Oh, that was a nice one. You see the damage, and that one was absolutely massive. The all in there onto the Asuo is way too late. Really good R3 by the Gwen. Huge damage, too. Let's see where we're at now. 285. Hey. Of course, it does apply a thousand cuts um, to everyone hit as well, so you get your passive proc from that. Huge, huge gank. Good decision to go down here. Now, Evelyn could take all of these. We saw her and easily go up. To... If you're Evelyn and you see camps that are gone, please walk through all brushes. Just walk through all brushes. You know it's warded in some capacity. This is why you also have a scanner as Evelyn early. So when you lose camps to counter jungling, you can clear it because those wards are really punishing as Evelyn. That's why I like the scanner early. It's fine. You go kind of warding totem, scanner, blue trinket, use that for assassination. But as an Evelyn trek, brushes, scan things up. Gwen's now already at 110 CS because dragon's count is four, grubby's count is two each. So that's, you know, another 12 CS from the grubs. Don't discount that as well. Well, on our way to 10 per minute. Because we'll catch some waves, we'll push some waves, I'm sure of it. Now, 
Gwen either has downtime at dead time early and you come online at 14 and just take the game over, or you have a reasonably active early game like this one, and now you kind of have a bit of a quiet moment because your clear speed amps up so damn quickly. Two points in E at this particular stage, five in Q. Camille is rotating. Now, if you've got Riftmaker, you've got some itemization, you've got Sorkies, uh, you've got Ionians, depending on your philosophical bend, uh, feel free to go back to base. But in this case, you know, like 1,230 gold. Gonna interrupt myself here because the Evelyn does actually show up finally going in the mid lane full charm onto the Asuo gets that kill. That's why Gwen decides, okay, let me shadow the scenario just in case she shows up again and I can definitely do something alters up again in what, five seconds? But the Evelyn is really not in this game. And as an Evelyn player as well, I know, like, when you're 76 CS, you're being outfarmed like this by a Gwen. It is a, it is frightening. You have to ensure as an Evelyn you don't lose any or too much to clearing junglers who can beat you 1v1 as well. It's a very n not good situation to be in. I mean, she's down two levels. It's, it's horrific. So this jungling, the gank top lane, again, I like it. But afterwards, I think looking for the mid lane gank is greedy as hell. You know at this point that the Gwen's full clearing. You know at this point the Gwen's going to have these up. you got to lay your warding totems to track her, make sure you control your camps, so you reset. And then you're going to probably have to cut out maybe your Krugs or your Raptors on the respawn if you're Evelyn, just to try and match the Gwen to some degree and cut her off. But when you don't do that, Gwen gets fed, Gwen dominates, and such is the way of the world. Now, again, out of base. Sork boots completed. Amp tomes completed. Rise uninitiated, and Evelyn sitting mid lane looking to try something again on the Yasuo, who is 244. There's a full charm, there's a panther, and now because she doesn't have her ultimate up, obviously not, we have a small problem. Gwen decides, you can do this. This is, this is what Gwen's power is. Let your team play around a little bit, a bit more, because you can kill everyone 1v1 at this particular stage, and you have so much threatening, uh, turret threatening damage with the mites and your Nash's tooth and just general kit. Now, you look, look at this, you watch this. Feel free to watch this rotate to this get involved, kill everybody, as she's doing, right? But if your team can't do it, you're there with the rotation to clean up. And if they can do it, then you can join them with turret pushes and go all the way in. Now again, she does the most damage in this game by far. Camille's doing a solid job, but Gwen does the most damage. And sometimes people conflate and confuse things with, you know, like damage in a game, KDA in a game, kills in a game. The damage you do, Say you get 15 kills, but you do like third most damage. Were those kills going to happen if you didn't show up? No? Well, then the damage you did to get the kills was more important, right? Than having double the damage. So you've always got to look at the game and how it's played. If you do a lot of damage and have no kills, but your team are able to clean up all the kills, or you die and uh, you get no assists, but they stay out and your team clean up, that's good damage. So you got to look at KDAs and damage. Obviously, there's a general vibe with it that you can look at it and be like, look, this person's inting or this person carried. But always look at it through the lens of what plays were enabled through my damage, or through me kill securing, or through me doing both. Especially if you have lower KP as a farming jungler, because as a farming jungler, you know, 8 out of 18, this is normal. Because the gold amount here is at 7,800. 7,800. The Evelyn's at 5.5. That's all I care about here. Experience and gold, and now how can we use it in the 15 to 20 minute marker to push the map, end the game, get the heralds. That's where it is. That's where it is. Nowhere else. Ultimately, you could be 0 0 0. Obviously, this is not farming jungle matters. We go all in the fight. I mean, like, no one's going to kill her now. You know, no one, well, they could in theory, but she has to be, you know, a little bit intelligent sometimes because obviously you can't be CC'd. You can't be killed. You're not uh, immune to death. Well, it feels that way sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> Truly does. You can be 0 0 0 sometimes, but have the most golden experience in the game. So it matters. Not at the moment, but in certain matters. So while KDN impacting the map is important, I want you to always think about when I'm Gwen, economy per minute, my golden experience. If I make this play, will it benefit my economy per minute or will it hurt it more than if I did a quadrant, rotated to a lane, held a wave and so on? Question marks always about these decisions. But so far this has been really solid. 177 now, almost flame horizon the uh, the Evelyn here, Evelyn tries to go in, Gwen shadow in the center. See, we don't go for the Gromp, we see someone setting up trap. We know we're strong. Loop back, cut through, grab kills. And this is what I put out on the main channel, the jungle decision making test again, updated first time in many years. And I talked about this, this at the end, I said, should you push, should you fight, or should you macro? And a lot of the times, most people get caught up in saying, we can just do zero, zero risk and win. Well, my friends, when you're this fed, it's not really a risk. You dominate, as long as you don't mess it mechanically. That is the risk, but you got to trust yourself mechanically, trust your champion, trust your knowledge. 
If someone's out of position here and you're hugely fed, kill them. Kill them and push more. Take all the jungle camps. Now I fall back to this. This for me was a, a low risk play. Even for, like, I'm not going to take the Gromp and then potentially lose my support. I see him trying to make a play. Rotate, kill everybody, take all their stuff, fall back to the Dragon. Easy. Very, very easy. Now, obviously, at this point, we should probably think about basing. We can do the Gromp first and the Wolves again if we need to before basing. Or we can stay all the way out and keep looping here. See, this is too low risk for me, but in this kind of game, it's okay. Because I'm worried about my team pushing. My team clearly want to push, and now I want a full sequence to get Riftmaker and base, right? Which, of course, she does. But you have to trust that your team are not going to int it. However, in most cases, I think it's fine. Honestly, I think it's fine. I think you're so fed. There's no Baron. There's no Dragons. Even if your team wipe, all, all you're going to lose is maybe one turret. And if they split up, you still kill everybody yourself. Always look at it like this. And now, of course, your team hold on long enough. And yes, sir, most likely will die. So we'll try and peel them as much as we can. We get a little bit Samira there. Pantheon shows up and snacks that. Kill, kill, steal. Now, of course, we can reposition and go onto the Jax here. We try to go into the back line with another ultimate proc. Four people. That's a good Q3. Q3, R3 there. Back up. Don't let the charm go through because we don't have Gwen as immune. We've now shoved them completely out of the lane. Push the turret. The game is easy. When you factor in economy per minute as your source of guidance. Because if I chase kills there and I don't get anything, my economy per minute, my gold experience is low. But if I push turrets, it's high. So you always know what to pick. And of course, again, our team is just grouped up and no one can touch Gwen. Just no one can touch Gwen right now. Let them do that. Watch it. See. Watch it. See. Can I do something? If no, catch the bottom wave here. This is how you get 10 CS per minute, by the way. Look at this. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's Gwen going to do? I mean, what's Evelyn going to do? Why do we keep confusing their names? Gwendolyn, Evelyn. That makes sense, right? Of course it does. Now, we do have your 1231 in cash money pocket, so you can go back to base and start rinsing out your... Uh, your uh, death caps, but in this case we get some Amtoms extra because we plan on staying out longer to do the Baron, which of course you do. Now, here, the question is, do you go back to base or do you stay out? If your team are ready to push an end and if you're strong enough to push an end and you don't need to base and you're not really going to finish an item, why base? Especially when you have this kind of lead, especially if you have pressure on the map. Now, if you base right now for an artificial buy, like half of a Sterex or one needlessly large rod, and your team die because you did this and they were ready to end, that's on you, all right? So factor in your base timings in this particular phase of the game. Obviously, Jax has gone too far deep here, and now we can just go all for the ultimate procs. You got three of them, so if you miss them, it's fine. And <laughs> the charm inside the Gwen W does nothing, and the healing... <laughs> uh... I mean, like, they just were never killing her, were they? They were just never killing, and that's really the point I'm talking about here. You can see here that doesn't give us the stats anymore. We gain, we gain that Omni Vamp as well now. Not like we used to, but we still do. Riffmaker, Nash's Tooth, 25 stacks, Sork Shoes, slap into yourself some Amp Tomes or Needless. And honestly, most games are winnable by 21, just because your kid has everything possible to macro, to fight, to control, to deny. One Jungle, Hidden OP.